board is again in session. We are back on the record in case number, please be seated. We are back on the record in case number DV10-01877, McDowell versus McDowell. Ms. Luna. Yes, Your Honor, I'm ready to present with my client. All right. Ma'am, I remind you once again, you're under oath. As I understand it, Exhibit 3, we've got everything in but the front page and the uh, snapshots that are in the middle. That's right. Okay. Mrs. McDowell, um, let's maybe start with those snapshots in the middle so then that way we can get everything in. Okay. And those snapshots, and let's talk about where they start. They're at uh, was bait stamps page 11. Mm -hmm. Okay, and on this particular uh, document, can you tell the court, identify what it is? Um, this is rent payments um, uh, to Mr. McDowell. Okay, and who prepared this report? Uh, our bookkeeper. Our bookkeeper. And do you, do, she's going to be here today, but did she rely on some of the checks that we've already admitted into evidence? Yes, okay. she did. And this is a full overview, is that correct? Correct. And is this a true and accurate report as for the best that you know? That I know, yes. Okay. I would move to admit it. Ms. Mayhem? Your Honor, I don't object to its admission so far as it's their listing of what they believe they paid. I'm not agreeing that the payments actually went that way. All right. Um, <clears throat> the court will um, admit the, the cover sheet then, exhibit it to? It's, it's actually the middle sheet, it's 11. Bait stamp it's, yeah, it's based after 11, and it's a QuickBook report with uh, transactions that my client believes. And it's, I'm going to have her explain, it's in the middle because there were check numbers that we didn't have any other proof that are listed on here. Bait stamp 11 is admitted. Okay. And Mrs. McDowell, specifically, this was admitted <coughs> for the reason that I just said, because there were some check numbers that we didn't have copies of the checks. Correct. And these are the checks that you believe have all been paid to Mr. McDowell? Yes. Okay. When you look at uh, Exhibit 3, base stamp 12. And 12, 13, 14, and 15, 16, 17, 18, I guess I could have given you a number, there's a senior way to do that. Through 22. 12 through 22, are, can, can you identify what these documents are? 12 through 22? Yes, ma'am. Uh, checking account statements. Okay, and are these bank records for Rivendell Inc.? Yes, they are. Okay, and are these true and accurate copies, other than in places you have circled certain checks? True and accurate copies of those individual bank records. Yes. Your Honor, I would move to admit those particular documents for the fact that they are bank records to be argued as Ms. Mayhem may wish. No objection. And the remaining uh, statements will be admitted as well. And just for sake of the record, we are talking about uh, Defendant Exhibit 3. That's right. Now, Mrs. McDowell, if you look at the very first page, and can you identify what this particular document is? Uh, page 12? On Exhibit 3, first page. Oh, first page. And I'm not talking about the page step one, I'm talking about the very first sheet. Yes, I, I know. I just this Yes. You're going to look a little different because I'm notes. Uh, Excel statement. Um, review of funds paid to Keith McDowell by Rivendell. Right. And independent. do you know why this was prepared? Is this an overview of all the checks that are underneath Exhibit 3 and the bank statements? Yes. 
Yes. And this would be a complete overview of everything that you think was paid to Mr. McDowell, with the exception of some other checks that were paid for other reasons, right? Correct. Okay. Yes. And who prepared this? Uh, you did. Okay. And it's, it's to the best of your knowledge, after looking at it, is this true and accurately to represent what's up underneath it? Yes. Okay. Your Honor, I would move to admit our Excel spreadsheet for the value of what it's worth. No objection. As an illustrative exhibit? I'm sorry. As an illustrative exhibit? Yeah. Because that's really what it is. Because that's what it really is. Yeah. Mrs. McDowell, when we prepared this, we used not only the checks that were written and that have been identified by Mr. McDowell as those checks that he actually acknowledged as, correct? Correct. We also used checks that you claim to have deposited, and we'll go over those in a minute, to Mr. McDowell. Correct. And we also used bank statements on items that you believe were paid to him in some manner or another. Correct. All right. And also in the process of doing this, there were a few checks that were for other reimbursements, and we included those on here and noted for example, on check number 2033, it was a reimbursement for a car rental. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when these were totaled, we came up with $39,467.45 paid to Mr. McDowell, correct? Mm, correct. And then there are a few checks on here that you would acknowledge may have gone to some things like rental, rental car reimbursement mm -hmm. and other items, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, but for the most part, this is your representation as to at least what you know is to be paid to him based on the checks and other evidence we definitely had documentation. Yes, yes. Okay. Let's talk specifically about the couple of checks where Mr. McDowell <coughs> says that he doesn't recognize them. Will you look at check number three? And this particular check, do, can you identify who endorsed the back of that check? Uh, Mr. McDowell. And why is it that you believe he endorsed it? Uh, because I don't sign little circles okay and so the best of your knowledge you believe this check was actually cat was actually deposited or cashed by mr. McDowell yes okay let's take a check number four this particular check do you recognize the handwriting on the endorsement section yes and whose handwriting is that that's mine okay and let me ask you do you have any recollection as to where this check was deposited in our personal account Okay, and would that have been the, the when you said the personal account, the Keith McDowell and the Tony McDowell? Tony McDowell, account. correct. Okay. And what did you write on here? Did you sign his name or what did you put? For deposit only. Okay. And your understanding on these funds being paid from Rivendell, they were being back paid back to a community owed loan. Correct. 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 So the Rivendell the community business is paying back the community. Correct. And you put it in a community account to the best of your recollection. Yes. What about check number, and I'm really sorry, that number's kind of bled over, is six. The one that's based on six, check number 2033. Mm -hmm. Do you recognize this signature on the section where you, it was deposited? Yes. And whose signature is that? It's mine. Okay, and what did you write on that one? For deposit only. Okay, and do you know, do you have any recollection as to where you put that check? In our joint account. Okay. Number seven, do you recognize that particular endorsement on that check? Yes. And what is that endorsement? Whose endorsement is that? Mine. Okay, and what does it say? Deposit only. And where, to your recollection, if you recall, did that check get deposited? Yes. Where was it? In our joint account. Okay. So did you have Mr. McDowell's permission to deposit these checks? He was aware that I was depositing them, yes. Okay. And during the marriage, did you did, was this something that regularly occurred? Would you deposit checks for him? Yes. Okay. So this was nothing uncommon or unusual. No. Okay. Do you believe that you paid way more than what he's representing to this court in terms of this loan? Yes, I do. Who do you think that would have the most accurate accounting of what has actually been paid back to him? We would. Okay. And would it possibly be your bookkeeper may be able to tell us yes. more efficiency? Let's take a look at Exhibit 1, which is your financial declaration. Mrs. McDowell, do you recognize this particular exhibit? Yes, I do. Okay, and is this a financial uh, declaration you, pay, you prepared on March 12, 2012? Yes. 
And on this particular document, did you also attach on the very last page the 2011 W-2? Yes. And I don't think it's the very last page. I apologize. It's, but it's the last. After page 7 of the financial declaration. Do you see your 2011? Yes. Mm -hmm. It's your 1099, actually. 1099. Can you tell me how much do you show on this as having made for the year 2011? $21,710. Okay. Do you know if that's the complete amount that you've received from Rivendell in terms of funds for your work? Yes. Employment? Yes. Okay. Is there any more income other than this that you're aware of that you received last year? No. Okay. You do receive some benefit that you, when you stay at Rohan Ranch, you stay there for free, correct? Right. Okay. And you also occasionally get a meal on the business as well, is that what yes. you're Yes, yes. And that would not be reflected on this 2011 statement, but mm. would be reflected in the bank account statement. Correct, statement. correct. Now, let's talk about the meals that you took. When you take a meal on the business, or tell me how those go. Who's usually included and what are they for? Uh, usually the meals included are when I go out with staff, and we talk about program issues, client issues, and or when I take a client out, client out because the client is escalated, upset, or needs some time out. Um, so typically, all, all the time is with a client or and or a staff person or a business meeting. Okay. <clears throat> Do you have any other questions about the And I'm looking at page five and six of seven is the way it's labeled on your sheet. And I want you, when you get there, will you look up? Let me see that you're there. Okay. And when you, I want you to look down at what is itemized is number 25. And that's a soundproof studio and electronics for $5,000. Can you tell the court what that is? Uh, that was a studio um, that was built within our uh, Park Place house that was uh, Keith's music corner, so to speak. Okay, and when was it built? Um, in 2003. Okay, and what was the purpose of that studio? The purpose so he could start his uh, recording studio, okay. and Lost in Art Sound Design. And you understood Mr. McDowell to testify today that that's no longer in existence. Mm -hmm. Were you aware of that? No. And did you believe it was still in existence? Yes. Do you have any knowledge as to whether he's used that studio and electronics for purposes of making income? No. Okay. You valued it on your asset and liability sheet because you believe it's an asset that needs to be divided. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, have you also included, if you'll look over on page five, it's, you're going to flip about two pages over, it says page five of six and seven, same. But it's going to be the page that has got your debt listed on it. And it's line item number 51. Mm -hmm. And you list their visa. How much do you say that you owe on that visa? 6000 Okay. And that particular document, we provide your credit report. Is that debt also on your credit report? Yes. Okay. And would you be willing to, to agree that those debts listed on your credit report, whether or not they're on your financial declaration, would be an accurate accounting of both yours and Mr. McDowell's debts at this time? Repeat that again. The credit reports. Would you agree that those debts reflected on those are an accurate recording of the debts that exist at this time? Yes. For both you and Mr. McDowell? Yes. Okay. Any other and Mrs. McDowell, in looking at your uh, financial declaration, can you tell me, um, and I believe you'll want to look at page three of seven, what your estimated expenses are for every month? Uh, one thousand nine hundred and fifty-six dollars. And if you can flip over to the page before, which is page two, what do you use as your total gross income each month? The total gross? Yes, ma'am. Is um, it one thousand eight hundred nine dollars? Yes. Total monthly income, yeah. Okay. So according to the in, according to this, you're not exactly making ends meet every month. Not necessarily, no. And according to this, you're making less money than Mr. McDowell as well. Yes. 
Now, is it fair over the course? From 2007 to 2011, does your income sometimes vary from month to month in terms of what you're getting? Yes, it does. Okay. And why is that? Uh, due to the placements in the program and ensuring that those that do provide the work that they get paid. Do you pay yourself or your staff first? Uh, staff first. Are you owed any money for unpaid work that you've yes. done for the business? Do you know how much you're owed? Um, not offhand. I'm going to do a little housekeeping. Can you look at Exhibit 12 for me? And I'm going to start with, with A. Um, I think we may have already talked about A, but can you tell the support what this particular document is? 12A. The first page? Yes, ma'am. Asset and liability schedule as of March 2011. Let's flip over the next page. Section 12A. Is this a copy of your uh, checking account? Mm. Oh, okay, yes. Wrong page. Yes, it is. All right, and can you tell me what the date is on this checking account? 228, 2012. Okay. And this statement would be the statement that would represent probably the most recent value on a statement that you had as of this day. Yes. Okay. It's true and accurate copy? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, I move to admit 12A. No objection. Right, do you have any objection to the back, just the back of documentation on this? If you don't mind, we can stipulate to it. It'll keep you from having to. Hold on. Counsel, at the beginning of this case, there was an indication about what uh, documents were objected to. 12 was one that I had objected to. All right, thank she you. did. I think it was mainly, my, the reason why I'm asking, I think it was mainly my balance sheet, and I'm willing to remove that if she'll agree to the rest of yes, it. Yes, the rest is fine. Okay. So I guess we're going to stipulate on 12A through um, J, but not that first page of 12 itself. All right. And 12A through 12J will be admitted. Mrs. McDowell, do you think that you're able to afford alimony payments to Mr. McDowell? No. And at this time, do you know what education he has? Does, what education does he have? A high school diploma. And what about you? High school diploma, GED. And do either of you have any additional licensing that you're aware of? Um, he has a CDL what certificate. Is, what is a CDL? A commercial driver's license. Okay. And do you know the last time that he may have used his CDL for purposes of employment? Um, approximately 2007. Okay. So he may not have a lot of experience at this point in time on that particular Correct. licensing. And then you testified yesterday that you have some CPR, things like that. Right. Okay. But no other certification or licensing beyond that? No. Okay. And do you believe that other than what you're doing at this point in time that you have the ability to go out and get additional work or more employment? Yes. Yes. And, and in terms of that, are you talking about in addition to this job? Or yes, in job? addition to, I could, yes. Okay. How many hours per week are you currently working? Probably about, oh, pretty close to 45 to 50 hours a week. So you're Depending on the situation, yeah. You're working a full-time week as it is. Pretty much, yes. What about Mr. McDowell? Do you believe that he could have additional employment other than what he's already got? Yeah. Let me ask you, do you have any knowledge as to how much he plays in bands? As far as he does play on the weekends. Okay, and was that common during the marriage? Yes. And how often did he do that on weekends? Right? Almost every weekend when the bands were gone. And do you know what bands he was doing that for at that time? Uh, Method, Timeless Wonder, um, Dane Reinhardt Band. Those were some different bands he worked with throughout our marriage. And do you know how much he got paid when he played for those individual bands? Yes. And what is your understanding? $100 a night. Okay. And so 
so that's consistent with what mm -hmm. he's testifying to. Um, during the marriage, how would you describe the financial conditions of the community? Uh, paycheck to paycheck, basically. Okay, and that was for both of you? Yes. Okay, and as of today's date, how would you describe your current financial conditions? Uh, paycheck to paycheck. And is there any physical or mental health reason that you're unable to be employed? No. And what about Mr. McDowell? Are you mm. aware of any reason? No. How long were the two of you married? Uh, almost 10 years. Separated at eight years. Okay. So if you use today's date, it's almost 10. If you use the date of separation, it's eight. Yes. Okay. And during the marriage, did both of you work? Yes, we both did. Okay. And is your work, what was your work history during the marriage for both of you? Is it consistent with what it is today, pretty much? Yes. Let's just talk briefly about the claims that you attempted to sell furniture on Craigslist. Did you? Uh, the company furniture, yes. Okay, and what was were those pieces? Uh, the black couch, chair, ottoman. The china cabinet, the uh, uh, purple rug, a silver piece of artwork. And were you able to sell those items? No, we weren't. Okay. Where are those items now? Uh, Mr. McDowell has them. Okay. Um, and let me, let's talk specifically, I want to go back to the house on Park Place. In terms of when it was utilized for a group home, mm -hmm. um, you've heard his testimony regarding damage to that home. Mm -hmm. What knowledge do you have as to the condition of the home after the individuals moved out of it and you and Mr. McDowell moved back in? Um, we had cleaned it up and fixed, made repairs and moved our family back into it. Okay. Were you aware that there was a broken window that needed to be fixed? That got fixed while we were there. When you say while you were there? While the group home was there. Okay. Who paid to have that window broken? Uh, Rivendell did. Okay. Let me ask you, do you know anything about a broken toilet laying on its side? No. Was when you moved back into the house after the group home left, what was the toilets? What were the toilet conditions of the toilets? Everything left? was operational. Okay. Prior to Rivendell using that home and during the time they used it, did they make any improvements to the home? When Rivendell was using yes. it? Yes, we did. Okay. Do you know what improvements? Yes, we worked on the sprinkler system. We up, uh, put uh, upgraded the front yard because the lawn was always dying, so we put more of the gravel stone in there. So we did the garbage disposals. We replaced the stove top because it wouldn't work. The fan, the whole lighting system. So. And what about the cat urine that he alleges was there? Do you have any knowledge about it? No. Okay. When did you first find out that there were concerns about damage to the home? In the middle of all this divorce. <laughs> Okay. Several and months later, after the fact. And, and what, is your, what is your recollection as to whether or not there was that actual damage to SC's list? Was it there or was it not there in your mind? It wasn't there. Okay. Mrs. McDowell, are you asking for the pension to be split that Mr. McDowell has earned if he does best? No. Would you be willing to let him take that on the community side of the balance sheet for him? Yes. One moment. Mrs. McDowell, can you specifically tell this court what it is that you're requesting happen in terms of how the assets and debts are divided between you and Mr. McDowell at the end of the day? I'm requesting that um, it be fair. Um, I am uh, I am okay with him having his home and his debts, and I'm okay with me assuming my debts in Rivendell. Do you think that you should be responsible for the remainder, what he calls the remainder on the lease between Rivendell and, no. and the home? Do you believe that the community benefited from the payments that were made? I do. Okay. And 
are you requesting that no alimony be awarded? No. And you're requesting that no alimony be awarded. Right? right. Yeah. I don't. And are you also requesting that attorney's fees be denied? I'm not requesting attorney fees from him. And you also don't want to pay Mr. McDowell's. Right? No, I don't. Okay. I have no additional questions at this time, Your Honor. Ms. Mahan. Thank you. <clears throat> Ms. Luna about Action Coach. How did you first learn about Action Coach? Through uh, VPASS, my administrative assistant, and, and through some people in the community that I'd worked with. And what exactly, how would you describe Action Coach? Um, what, what specifically? You well, you have a business coach, just like you have if you have a life coach or you know, you have a business coach who works with you and works with your team to help develop a business, you know, put things together and systems in place to better improve your business delivery mechanisms. And who is your particular business coach? Jeremy Fairbanks. Would you turn to what's been marked as exhibit, plaintiff's exhibit B, e, please? Is it this one? Oh, uh, yeah, maybe. Is it Exhibit B? I'm sorry, E as in... Okay. <laughs> and would you turn to the second page of that exhibit, which is actually, if you turn the book so that the it's a landscape presentation, mm -hmm. the page is on the bottom right-hand corner and the circle here says seven. Now, on the top left-hand portion of that page, is that a picture of your business coach? Yes, it is. And have you seen this page before? Um, no, actually, I have not. Have you ever uh, given positive statements about your business results to Mr. Fairbanks? Yes, I have. And did you know that he may put those on his website? He said that he would and okay. asked my permission if... Okay. if you could. Do these statements accurately reflect what you told Mr. Fairbanks? Without having in front of me specifically what I sent to him, no, I would not say that. Well, do you deny that you gave him a statement? I did give him a statement. But and have you ever seen the website since you gave him the statement? No, actually I have not. Okay, so have you read this now? I will. Okay. The part above under the word testimonial and mm -hmm. above where it says TM Rivendell Independent Living, mm -hmm. the portion below that is not has not been attributed to you. Okay. And then if you turn the page and you go down about to the middle of the page. It says in bold print, do you see where it says the process by which you acquire something dramatically changes how you experience what you have acquired? If you could just read below that. To yourself, not out loud. To yourself, yes, yes. Below that, onto the next page, again where it says TM Rivendell Independent Living, and just let me know when you're finished. I saw you jumping, Ms. Luna. Mm -hmm. So you want me to read this whole part? To yourself. Okay. You can skip the, the part that is not attributed to you. Well, I'm, I'm really sorry, Ms. Mahan. I, if I'm, I'm not supposed to be looking at page 8, or are you asking her to look at page 9? Um, because what I just understand was clearly not attributed. So. Right, okay. I'm not trying, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to be difficult, but. I'll, I'll, I'll show it to her too. This, just so that we're clear. Yeah, because this. Uh, this is attributable to her, and then this is not. Because you see it ends here. This is her and she ends. This is the plumber. And this is her again. And so this middle part can be skipped. So I just wanted to read this and then skip that and then read the next part that's attributable to her. Oh, well, see, I, would, I thought this was... No, you can see there's no name above this. So this is a thing and then a name and then a testimonial and a name. 
They don't put the names above the testimonial, they put the names below the testimonial. I'll show her. May I push the witness on it? Yes, you may. So what I'm talking about here is... I'm sorry, I don't mean to confuse her. Well, you need to be able to follow, counsel. At this point, I'm not because it's not admitted. Um, so you might no notice here in, where it says testimonials mm -hmm. that the name of the person making the testimonial mm -hmm. is not placed above it. It's placed below it. Mm -hmm. So this part would be attributable to you. This next part is not. It's a, a different company, a plumber. So if you turn the page, mm -hmm. that's where his part ends. This is the next one that starts, mm -hmm. and at the bottom of this is your name. Okay. So if you could just read basically this section, skip that middle plumber part. Got it. Okay. Some of them, yes. Okay. I would request that plaintiff's exhibit E be admitted. I'm going to object, Your Honor, because she's, again, not clarifying that this is, A, an accurate copy of the website or an accurate, complete statement of what she's presented. It also, I can tell you, it's not a complete website, and although this is a minor thing, there are words cut off at the end. In addition, I do believe this is cross-examination and therefore inappropriate for admission at this point in time. I bring it up because they opened the door. They brought up the subject of action coach, the job coach, earlier in the direct testimony. Uh, it is um, hearsay, although I don't believe that was an objection, but it clearly overcomes both the uh, prior and consistent, the prior and consistent uh, statement, and she is here and available for cross-examination, which is what I'm intending to do. It is a public website. She claims to have some familiarity with the website. She doesn't say she has none. She says there are accurate statements in there, and basically, she has allowed her opinions uh, to be used by this person in a public forum, and they should be admissible in this forum as well. To the extent there are accurate statements, those statements may come in. The remainder of the document is going to be uh, still uh, out, and you did open the door. Actually, Your Honor, may I speak to that? I know I asked her about it. I specifically did not ask her. Um, and guys may have to correct me, but I don't think I asked her about the results of it and whether or not she, it was a favorable thing for her. I specifically tried to leave that out because I didn't want to open the story to this. I think asking her about it, open. I don't think you get to parse it that fine. I think that you've opened the door to the issue and the issue's squarely in front of us. So as to the statements that she made, that's in, the remainder of it is not. So you're going to have to help me a little bit about which statements are accurate. Okay. I was planning on reading a statement and asking her if she believed it was accurate. Have her identify to her, have her read it to herself, ask her if it's accurate, then we can bring it in. Okay. And Okay, so on the page that's marked 7 in the bottom right-hand corner. Correct. Um, where your statement begins at the top of the page under the big words that say testimonials. Mm -hmm. Would you read that first sentence and tell me if you believe it's accurate? Uh, yes. Okay, would you read it out loud? After one year of being coached by Jeremy, we decided that in order for the business to become more efficient and effective, I must be much more efficient and effective with my time. And how about <clears throat> the next sentence? Read that to yourself, please, and then decide if that's accurate. The results? Don't. Not allowed, right? No, to Unless herself. Unless you've already okay. determined that. If, if you already know that's one of the ones that's accurate, then it's fine to read it out loud. The re results were 
I went from working 100 hours a week in, in the business down to approximately 30 hours a week in business. I was able to breathe again and regain the passion for my business that I had when we first started. The next sentence is not my sentence. So the sentence about your specific revenue increase is not yours. Correct. So how long if are you gonna strike that? If we were to call Mr. Fairbanks on the phone and mm -hmm. ask him if, if you had authorized these statements, do you believe that he would, he would say no? I authorize. I, I call for speculation. I authorize the statement She's, that I sent. Actually, him. this is correct. This is appropriate cross examination. She is um, looking at credibility. I'm going to permit just uh, a bit of this. So, if we were able to get his number here as basically an impeachment witness that I have not anticipated, I would need. Um, if we were able to get him on the phone and read him these same sentences that you've been asked to read. Mm -hmm. Um, is it your testimony here today uh, that uh, you would say to him, I never said that? This is what I do know. No, I did not specifically say that. What happens is when you send a testimony to another person and they put it on their website, they modify things to, for their marketing agenda also. So that part specifically, no, I did not talk to him about and I have the copy of what I sent to him. So if he... Do you have it here today? No, I don't have it here today. You knew this was going to be an exhibit though, correct? A proposed exhibit? Not, no, I did not. Okay. How about, let's move on to the section on page two. Oh, I'm sorry. We didn't, we didn't finish. We didn't finish. Let's, let's do the last sentence in that, on that same page you were already reading from, the one that comes after the sentence about specific cash flow and profitability. It's just that one sentence that starts with right, okay. after two. Mm -hmm. Are you denying that you said that? No, I did say that. Okay, would you read it out loud then, please? After two years of working with Coach Jeremy, we are opening up another facility in Washington with plans to eventually expand internationally while continuing to increase revenue and profitability. Okay. Would you turn to the next page, please? And do you see where in the middle it says MG Plumber Man Plumbing? Mm hmm If you would go below that, this, that's the cessation of the prior testimonial. And I do, I do agree with Miss Luna, and I printed in landscape to avoid that, and I don't know what happened. Some of the words are cut off on the, on the very far right hand side, so if you don't understand or can't read that word, I understand. But would you just please read the first? Um, little miniature paragraph there and let me know if you agree with those statements to the best of your ability with a couple missing syllables. Okay. Is that first part okay? Yes. The, okay, can you read that please? I believe this is so true to us to have dreams, aspirations, visions, hopes, and goals that we desire to accomplish. At times it may be overwhelming that you do not know how, which way to go or what to do. And how about the next paragraph? Would you like me to read it? If you believe it's an accurate statement.
those of us who have a passion to start a business have a secret that we want to share. But how, how do we do it? We already know the reward. We already know the end results. We know that once it's all done, uh, I'm assuming that, we will be complete. But how and what we need to do is the question. This is the looming question that haunts us daily. Okay, and how about the next paragraph? Two sentences, actually, but it's a paragraph. If you believe it's accurate, would you please read it? I have to say personally, my experience with my action coach, Jeremy Fairbanks, has been some. Uh, I wish I would have ha had 10 years ago and will forever be grateful for. There are no ways or words to express the relief, hope, and motivation to continue the course. And how about the next paragraph? I understand without the ability to draw on a dream for hope and inspiration, you can crush or deny your reality, which in business is very costly monetarily, physically, and emotionally. Um, something about 100 hours a week, no personal life, no time to spend with my children, a myriad of mountains to overcome. The next paragraph, um, if I <coughs> I don't mind if it's uh, I don't mind if it's read in the record. I'm just trying. To, I know we have limited time. These aren't that important paragraphs to me, but I, uh, uh, for the completeness of the exhibit, so I don't know what to say. Let's. I, I'm okay with skipping those paragraphs if you are. They kind of say the same thing that the last couple ones said about dreams and goals and so. Ms. Um, I'm sorry, I'm having a moment of thought. Um, it's your cross-examination. Would you look at the last paragraph that comes right above which, where your name is in bold? On which page? The page that you were, oh, I'm sorry, the page that says nine in the bottom right hand. Okay. 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 So uh, is that one that you're willing to read out loud? This is the greatest investment that you could ever take a chance on. You will reap the rewards and the process will be a wonderful experience. You will see and feel the tangible results. Okay, so you agree that you gave all that information to them? Somewhat. Okay. What I've read. Okay, and so actually, aside from the paragraphs that I did not ask you to read, um, the only, the only paragraph, uh, the only sentence uh, that you stated was not attributable to you was the specific one about uh, revenue and profitability changes. Mm -hmm. But it, but that was his take on how he does his to his financial uh, angle of what is considered profitability. It doesn't mean the actual cash flow. Okay, but he attributed, he attributes clearly on his website this statement to you. So are you saying that he put words in your mouth? You didn't suggest that or you didn't give him figures that would lead him to? I'm, no. You're not, you didn't or you're not saying that? I did not. He did, he did not anything? put words in my mouth. He did not put words in your mouth. I, what I wrote him and he takes and puts on what he wants to go onto his website. He takes bits and pieces out and puts it on the website. Did you write that you had increased your revenue by a certain percentage? No, I did not. Did you write that you had significantly increased your cash flow and profitability? I wrote that part. Okay, so did you write that you had increased your revenue at all? Like with, with no person? Did you just say At that, that time, yes, we did. 
Okay, so could you just read that sentence and leave out the number then? Because you've agreed to all other parts of it. Okay. So you're okay with reading the number. It's on the page that's marked seven in the bottom right hand corner. And what is it you want read? May I have first witness? Yes. <clears throat> This sentence that starts with as a result, and if you're saying that that number has nothing to do with you, you can read the rest of the sentence and leave the number off. Oh, uh, this sentence I did not write. Um, I did ask you, you answered, I asked you, mm -hmm. did you give him information that said you had increased your revenue? If you take... Ma'am, can I finish my question? Okay. I asked you, did you give him information that you had increased your revenue and you, without giving him a, a specific number, and he said yes. Yes. And I said, did you give him information that you had increased cash flow and profitability? And you said yes. Yes. So it appears to me that the only thing that you should, you would be uncomfortable reading about that sentence based on what Judge Peck advised you to do in this process would be the number. Because everything else you've already stated, you told him. But I did not give him that specific number, I nor know, did I write that. I'm asking you to read okay. the sentence without saying the number. Okay. Oh. No. I'm going to object, Your Honor. She's attempted to answer saying that she didn't write the specific sentence. I sustain the objection. Okay. If she didn't write the sentence, it's not a statement that can be attributed to her. Okay. But um, you do not deny telling them that your revenue had increased and that your cash flow had significantly increased mm -hmm. and profitability. Mm -hmm. So I would move that, with the exception of the sentence, I guess, I was going to say the number, but I think it's the number, but we, we can just take out that one sentence, that the pages of this um, that contain her testimony, what she has agreed to be okay, be admitted. If she, the, the two paragraphs that I skipped only for the sake of time, she wants to leave those out, that's fine. And in my mind, they're the same as prior. So the ones that she read out loud, I would ask to be admitted. This is what I'm going to do. Um, I'm not admitting the document. We have her testimony that states what the statements are. So the information is in the record. I think that is sufficient. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. that you had leased the Nissan before anything had happened to the geoprism because it was dying, I think was the word you used. Do you recall that? Yes. Okay. Just wanted to make sure I understood that correctly. <coughs> now, we've, you, you talked about, you gave your explanation to Ms. Luna of how this business works and how it's different in your perception from the businesses that Mr. McDowell ran in the 90s. And you talked about uh, the Medicaid billing and et cetera. But what you didn't talk about is the fact that you are also uh, your cl client's designated payees from SSD or SSI, correct? Mm hmm So uh, typically, the rent alone, their share of rent alone is covered by that. Mm -hmm. okay. and, and, and that's the reason, isn't it, why often the rent is 561.44, sort of a strange number, because it matches up with the SSD or the, uh, the SSI. Is that correct? That's not why the number's that way. Okay. Well, does the amount of rent um, vary depending? How, how does the amount of rent for each client vary? I mean, what causes it to be different for each client? We have certain clients that um, we get a different amount of rent for that are not on SSI or SSD, that are paid by an agency in the community, or they are the payees, because we do have some clients that the, the, the agency that places with us, the, that contract is separate. What if, um, what if, let's just say that Person, a, mm -hmm. a, a, somebody who works here at the court, or just anybody, has a, a 19 year old child with some issues, uh, some you know behavioral or issues, getting in trouble, and they're in and out of trouble. And they would like 
them to learn independent living and to try and get better socially. Could that, if, if that person was not on any sort of um, federal relief or program, could this person call up and say, hey, would, could my daughter come stay for a fee at your place? Would you uh, accept it, that person? Not necessarily, no. Why? Because uh, we we do a thorough intake, so we each client is gone through an intake depending oh. on the situation, because some clients can stay at home with their families. I didn't. That was perhaps not the best phrasing of my question. Okay. I, I meant after they had gone through the complete intake process, with mm -hmm. the forms and all of that. Correct. Just based on the fact that they would be private paying, the person would be paying for their child to be at your home. There wouldn't there wouldn't be a federal or any agencies. Would they still be allowed to be a part of Rivendell, assuming they passed all your other qualifications? If they were private pay? Yeah. Uh, we've taken one or two of those clients. Okay. To turn to Exhibit R. Miss <laughs> Darling R. And once you get there, if you go to page 10, what's marked 10 in the bottom right hand corner? Now, this exhibit has already been admitted, and it's the excerpt from the website dated 3 14, 2012. Are you on that page? On page 10? Yeah. Yes. And if you look up and it's where it says eligibility, yes. There's one sentence. Mm -hmm. And then there's a second sentence that starts with must have. Can you read that sentence out loud? Must have a fee for service Medicaid and or SSI SSD to be eligible for our program and or services. McDowell got a loan when you're referencing the um, 2007 loan, but in fact, Mr. McDowell got the loan, right? You're not on the, that loan paper, correct? No, I am not. Would you please, uh, one moment, I'm sorry. Your, your attorney asked you a few questions about <coughs> when you became separated in employment from 24-7 TLC. And uh, you mentioned that, I think you used the word oral, but I could be wrong, but something like that. Um, and which, which of the clients from 24-7, well, I don't need full names, but you can just give me first names if you want to, but which of the clients or staff from 24-7 came over to Rivendell with you? Which clients? Or staff. I don't have tax to relevance. Sustained. Now, would you please look at um, your Exhibit 3, Defendant's Exhibit 3. testimony correctly, it is that out of the $100,000 that was taken out in 2007, $25,000 was supposed to be to start at Rivendell. Is that correct? I mean, not to the penny, but roughly $25,000 was Rivendell startup. Well, startup and clean up the 24-7 stuff, yes. That was not what I understood you to say before. I understood you to say that that was startup, that it wasn't about the path. That was, 
are, are you suggesting that it's 25000 only, not 25000 for cleanup, plus additional money from the loan that was supposed to go to Rivendell? No. Just the only amount of money we talked about specifically in regards to everything was the $25,000. And so, in your mind, that twenty-five thousand is supposed to comprise cleaning up the past issues and improving on Rivendell. Correct. And so, when, if you look at uh, Bait Stamp One on under this exhibit, where it says in the memo line, personal loan repayment. Mm-hmm. You are considering that to be for uh, Rivendell and uh, cleaning up the past, correct? What page? It's stamped one under your exhibit three, so it's actually the second page of it. Okay, what was the question again? The question was, it says personal loan repayment, $25,000 mm -hmm. in the memo line. Correct. And you're saying that that 25000 that you're referencing there is not just for the past cleanup, it's for the past and getting Rivendell going. Is that correct? $25,000 is what we agreed to, to, is all that I needed to utilize to d get everything done, which is clean up and, and start. Would you look please at exhibit double H in the big book? Sorry to make you go back. Would you turn to what is marked as page 19 in the bottom right hand corner, and let me know when you're there. I'm at page 19. Okay. Um, so, <coughs> in the memo line of that check, you didn't write personal loan $25,000. You wrote Rivendell Inc., correct? The memo line? Um, we might be on two different pages. Um, may I approach on? Yes, you may. Double H. Um, are you in double H? Yes. Uh, 19. Yeah, the memo line right there. That's what I'm referencing. Okay. So that says Rivendell Inc., right? Correct. And then if you turn the page to page 20, mm -hmm. it's also Rivendell correct? Mm-hmm. And then on page 21, it's Rivendell Mm-hmm. Page 22, also, correct? Mm-hmm. Page 23 says Rivendell Inc. Mm-hmm. Is that for Rivendell? Uh, no, that was actually 24 7 That one specifically, yes. So on 831.07, Rivendell, Rivendell was up and running and operating with homes. Because in fact, all of those ones that I just read to you were the back were back debts associated with 24. Is that correct? Um, partially, yes. Both for 24-7 and Rivendell, Inc.
Now, earlier, uh, when Ms. Luna was um, having you go over some um, bank statements, the Wells Fargo bank statements that are actually at the beginning of this exhibit, and she was asking you about basically saying, well, the community was using the money too for, for food and, and other things, correct? Did she ask me that? Yeah. Yes, she did. Okay. So there's a lot of um, gas, gas charges here, uh, or at least Chevron. 7-Eleven um, charges basically similar to the ones that we were referencing for your first independent accounts, correct? Were we, uh, say that again, sorry. I'm not. Just, you know what, I'll do a different question. Okay. <laughs> Is it in fact true that when you're looking at the first independent account, uh, accounts that we went over yesterday that have, you know, four restaurants in one day and two different, mm -hmm. all that, all of that stuff, mm -hmm. you basically stated that all of that was for business, I believe. Mm -hmm. Correct? And yet, when we're looking at these statements that have some of the similar things, uh, didn't you in fact suggest that very little of that was for Rivendell as a business? Um, to be honest, we didn't have our we did not have our first house open yet because we hadn't gotten apartments yet during that time. Well, we just looked at checks that were written in August of '07 uh -huh. for Rivendell type things. Correct. Okay. May I explain? I, I think Your counsel can clean that up. Okay. No. Okay. Sorry. Did you testify earlier um, when Ms. Luna was asking you about, um, you know, monies coming into this joint account, and did you testify that that was the only account that you personally had at that time? I don't, so it was a, These, these uh, well statements that we're looking at. It's the only joint account that we had, yes. Okay, but that's not the only bank account. And I had my visa, Wells Fargo visa. Okay, you, yourself, had another bank account. Yes. Okay. And that was with Great the Basin. Great Basin. And that was separate income. That was not an account that Keith could access or that he was a signer on, correct? No, he was not. And the statements from that time frame Exhibit 8 in, in defendant's book, please. Defendant. Yes. I apologize. I apologize. I misspoke. Now, you stated in your uh, direct testimony that <coughs> Three people on the payroll for Rivendell, correct? Correct, at this time, currently. And if, if I had their first names correct, that would be Susanna, Tammy, and Tamara? Mm-hmm. And so when did that start? When did they become on payroll? Uh, 2012. And when you say on payroll, does that mean they're going to get a W-2? Yes, they, they get a W-2. Now, you are an officer of the corporation, correct? Correct. And you are CEO? Correct. But you are not on payroll. No, I'm not.
he stated <clears throat> in your direct that uh, Rohan Ranch and Rivendell are separate entities, correct? Mm hmm And yet, when we went over the first independent bankrupt records yesterday, which mm -hmm. is the exhibit... FF, um, which you can turn to to remind yourself if you'd like to. Um, that is where we were going over all the charges where there'd be a, a Moxie's and then there'd be mm -hmm. the, the White Hall Saloon or whatever it's called mm -hmm. in Washington. They'd all be happening on the same day. Mm -hmm. So you've got two different entities mm -hmm. with food and gas and whatever charges all happening out of the same bank account that is a bank account for Rivendell Independent Living. Mm -hmm. So they're two separate entities, but Rivendell basically pays for them both. Is that fair to say? It, uh, Rivendell is a corporate over Rohan. I'm sorry, explain that again. Rivendell is utilized, it's an S Corp, and we are not completely, nor have we been bringing income into Rohan. Rohan, the paperwork was filed, and that's pretty much as far as Rohan has gone. The paperwork and the account and from that point on nothing has happened outside of that rivendell basically it is the income source to develop or was planned to be the income source to develop rohan and all of rohan's um income is being deposited with rivendell there is no income from rohan you have clients but they're clients under rivendell that was my question right but they live in Washington. Because they choose to, because that's what they wanted to do. When, can you again clarify, and I apologize, I think you said it before, but I, this is, this is a lot of paperwork here. When is it that you are saying you suffered that substantial loss in your Medicaid funding? I believe you said 68%. When did that happen? I mean, was it, it happened over a period of one month because they changed the processor or whatever you said, or did it happen over a longer period? It was a longer period. One, it took us several months to even get into the, the process and figure out the processes. The government system changes all the time. 2008, towards the, in, the end of, two, almost all of 2008, was a lot of changes going on. And that's actually when I was trying to work with my coach to go, we got a bunch of changes coming down the pike. So from 2008, 9, and 10, there has been a lot of changes. Specific dates, I couldn't tell you right now. It was my understanding that you had characterized the sudden or the substantial alleged decline in the amount of money that Rivendell is making since this divorce began was due in large part to a 68% reduction in your Medicaid receipts. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's accurate? Because you also, oh, I, go ahead and answer, I'm sorry. I, I, whether it's accurate, no, I would have to talk to my bookkeeper on that. I'm sorry, who is the current processing? It starts with an H, the processor for Medicaid. I forget what you said. Heps. It's not Magellan, it's Heps. 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 What did it, and prior to that, it was Magellan? Correct. And, as and there was the intermediate one in between. Okay, and then we can see in older statements at one point it was someplace called Action Health on some of those, or ACH Health Services or something like that. Correct? I believe so. So, when did it change from Magellan to what it is now, or what was the intermediate between Magellan and the current? Ms. Mahan, um, it's quarter to three. It's my understanding that there are other witnesses to testify. We have until the end of this day to finish this trial. Okay, I'll move on here.
believe I just have one more question. If I can just have one more. All right. I have nothing further for uh, Ms. McDowell at this time. All right. <clears throat> Redirect cancel. I'll see if I can't be brief, Your Honor. Mrs. McDowell, I just want to clarify that the $100,000, and approximately 100000 I know it was a little over, loan, it went into the joint account. Yes, it did. And any withdrawals from that account would be reflected on the bank statements that are provided up until December 27th of 2007. Correct. And that's regardless if it went to a different account for you or for Mr. McDowell. If it was a check written somewhere, that's all reflected. Correct. Let me ask you, the testimonial to Action Coach, did you approve that testimonial before it went live on the website? I sent it, and I, from that point on, I sent what I wrote to him, and from that point on, I did not see it on the website. Okay. And would it be fair to say with Action Coach, you did see improvement? Yes. Okay, but that does not necessarily mean this business is a million dollar business. No. Okay. And I want to clarify, the $25,000 that we've been discussing, what was your understanding on how that was going to be repaid from the community business back to the community? That we'd re I, Rivendell, as money would come in, and however it would come in, we would repay it. Okay. And was that also in the form of rent? Correct. I have no further questions. Nothing further. Ma'am, you may step down. Council, would you like to take a brief afternoon recess? I'm fine with that, but I know she's got witnesses on that afternoon. I mean, I don't mind taking maybe five minutes to at least let everyone use the restroom and let your honor also have a break because I'm sure you would probably like one. Um, let's go ahead. Actually, we'll take 10 because that's usually what it takes people anyway. We'll be back on the record at 3. Thank you. All rise.